Virgo is the largest of the zodiacal constellations, so I had to wait a little longer than usual for it to completely rise above the eastern horizon. I've also found that I can get clearer images of the stars if I wait till they're directly overhead because there's less atmosphere to fog up the image. It was worth the wait. Let's draw upon Virgo to learn more about the night sky. Is that pun even funny? <laughs> I'm gonna keep using it. Virgo can be seen from March to July, moving gradually westward across the night sky. Mid to end May, beginning of June, right after dusk, is a great time to see this constellation. At about 9 or 10 p.m., she will be fairly high in the night sky if you're looking southeast, that is if you're in north, uh, the northern hemisphere. I was surprised to notice that she was lower in the sky than previous constellations that we've covered. In fact, I recently found that the ecliptic gets lower in the night sky as we move towards summer. Remember the ecliptic is the path that the sun traces across the sky through the zodiacal constellations. All of those, the constellations and the sun, are on the ecliptic, or thereabouts. Because the Earth's tilt when the sun is high in the daytime sky, aka summer, the ecliptic and the zodiacal constellations are subsequently low in the nighttime sky because the Earth orbits, or sorry, it rotates. So then when it's high in this direction, it's low the other direction, just as it turns, you know, 180 degrees. Moving on. Virgo is Latin for virgin. Greek tradition associated Virgo with Demeter, the Olympian goddess of the harvest of agriculture presiding over grains and the fertility of the Earth. So Demeter's daughter, Persephone, was, adept, was you know, apparently abducted by Hades, which was said to have led to winter. Here's a little bit of the background for you, at least as far as Greek tradition goes. You can find Virgo between Leo and Libra. It has a bright star that makes up part of the spring triangle. The spring triangle is an asterism, or a small pattern of stars, made up of Arcturus, Denebola, and Spica. If you can find Spica, which is a fairly bright star, then you've found Virgo. In fact, many of the other stars in this constellation are not very bright, so looking for Spica is probably your best bet, but you should be able to see the other ones here and there as well. There is a popular mnemonic using the Big Dipper that you can also use to find Virgo. It goes like this, arc to Arcturus, then speed to Spica. So, if you follow the Big Dipper's handle's arc shape southward, keeping the same general curve, you'll soon see a bright star called Arcturus. Then continue past that in more or less the same direction and you'll come to Spica. So if you find the Big Dipper, arc to Arcturus, and speed to Spica, and you'll find Virgo. What is in Virgo? Well, what it lacks in bright stars, it makes up for in notable deep sky objects. This relatively dark part of the sky is a window to 11 messier objects. Those, as a reminder, are deep sky objects such as nebulae and galaxies that were cataloged by astronomer Charles Messier. Virgo has countless galaxies. In fact, Virgo wins second place for a number of Messier objects, so there's a lot to look for. Let's go over Virgo's brightest stars really quick, and then we'll talk about some of the galaxies. Spica, as mentioned, is the brightest star in Virgo, and it is also called Alpha Virginis. Spica is Greek for ear of grain, which is often depicted in Virgo art, like I'm doing here. This star is actually two stars locked in tight orbit with each other, um, about 260 light years away from us. Spica is so hot that it burns blue. Next, we have Zavi Java, Beta Virginis, as it's also known, and this star is only 35 light years away. And despite its designation as Beta, meaning it should be the second brightest star, it is currently the fifth brightest star in Virgo. The third star I want to point out is Vindemiatrix. This is Epsilon Virginis and is the third brightest star in Virgo. The Latin origin for this star means grape harvestress, and this star marks Virgo's right hand. It is just over 100 light years away. Moving on to deep sky objects, you will find the amazing Virgo cluster between Vindemiatrix and the constellation Leo. Some galaxies in the Virgo cluster include M60, an elliptical galaxy approximately 57 million light years away, there's also NGC 4647 right next to M60, and it is a spiral galaxy about 63 million light years away. 
over closer to the star Spica is M104, or the Sombrero Galaxy, at about 29 million light years away. So these things are super far away. Um, I'll also mention the butterfly galaxies, and although I don't know exactly where they are, could not figure that out, here is a cool photo of them. Most of these galaxies I have spent some time looking for in a in a, about a $400 amateur telescope, and I haven't been able to see much of them, so you probably will need powerful magnification to catch a glimpse of them, but the photographs that are online you can find are very, very interesting. So. The Virgo cluster has possibly up to 2,000 galaxies, and it makes the heart of the so-called Virgo supercluster of galaxies, of which the Milky Way is part of, by the way. There are so many more interesting things in Virgo, but for now, I'll leave you with this image of GJ504b, the smallest planet ever photographed around a sun-like star outside of our solar system. And yet, it is still four times the mass of Jupiter. It's also apparently pink. <laughs> There you have it. That's all for now. The night sky is marvelous, so look up every once in a while and take it in. Please have a good day, and remember to smile.